Hello? <clears throat> yes, Brandon, are you hey. good? Sorry, sorry, my um I, the tab I for some reason it exited out. Okay. So, but I'm here now and ready to go. Okay, good. Okay. You're fine. So you can go to present now. All right, can everybody see me and hear me? Hello? You're good, Brandon. Go oh, okay, all right. Um, so for my capstone project, I decided to do the influence of both Michael Herr and Tim O'Brien in shaping the view, America's view of the Amer American war in Vietnam. So uh, the reason I chose these two authors is because uh, they're, I believe them to be the two most famous names of Vietnam War literature. Uh, my interest in this is, so the new journalism era that we, t we talked about in our capstone course, it, this era came from, it began in the Vietnam War period. And so I've always had an interest in that era. So it's uh, to my advantage that Michael Herr, who wrote Dispatches, that is actually a like one of the most famous new journalism works in that in that category. So my thesis is that using unique impro unique approaches and special styles in their writing, Michael Herr and Tim O'Brien helped shape America's post-war view of the Vietnam War into one that sees the soldiers as the victims of politically corrupt, violent, and unnecessary conflict. And in turn, that and in turn, redirecting most of the blame and anger over the war from these troops to the American government. So some of the things they use, some of the elements they use in their literature is that, especially for Hare, Michael Hare, um, Hare approaches his reporting with a new style, and that's new journalism. Also, both of them. Both writers also emphasize the soldiers' perspectives in the conflict, rather than the government, what the government issues or any other propaganda. So it's a very personal, personal experience. Um, they also both have, they also both have, you know, special structures, forms, forms and styles in their work. And the two works that we're going to be focusing on is Dispatches by Michael Herr, Her, which is his only Vietnam piece. And for O'Brien, it's going to be The Things They Carry, which is undoubtedly his most famous work. So some background on Michael Herr. So he was a war correspondent for Esquire magazine. And in the late 60s, he went to report on the Vietnam War. And the notes, interviews, and everything he wrote down for, for everything he collected, he would compile together to publish dispatches. And actually, about eight years later, in 1977, after he got back from the war, he went through um, he went through problems with the the fame of the book, and he suffered from depression especially some from some things he had seen in Vietnam. So uh, it took him a while to get the book finally published. Um, as mentioned before, he was a, a big figure in new journalism, which is basically, and I'll just reiterate, when you're, when you write, when you're writing nonfiction to sound like a novel, to sound like a fictional story. For Tim O'Brien, Unlike Hare, who was a reporter, O'Brien was actually, he actually served in the war. So he focuses much, as, much of his work, his career, on the Vietnam conflict, whereas her, Hare only wrote dispatches. Tim O'Brien, he has numerous works of books about the Vietnam War, his most famous being The Things They Carried, which is what we're going to focus on. Um, he's also known for... You know, there's 
Bear's simi- I'm sorry, I forgot. Basically, what Bear's similitude is, is when you have, when it's fiction that appears to be, that's plausible, like as if it actually happened. And Tim O'Brien, he's, a lot of people note him for this. The things they carried is, is a great example of this too, realistic fiction. So the thing I carry is, even though it's fiction, it's actually kind of an autobi- semi-autobiographical account of her, of O'Brien's experience in the war. So he says it himself at the beginning, this is a work of fiction, except for a few details. Everything in this book is imaginary. So he admits he admits himself that, you know, some of it's true. He's never really admitted what parts are true and what parts aren't. But he there are some elements in the book that you read that are definitely you can tell are definitely inspired by his by his own personal experiences. Um, like and this goes for dispatches too. the, the things they carried and dispatches are both cool both collective narratives, collective accounts of the war. So they take a handful handful of viewpoints from the soldiers and dispatches its its actual viewpoints. Michael Hare, he interviews a bunch of soldiers. Tim O'Brien, he writes a fictional story about this, about a fictional platoon of soldiers. But both of these function to show like a general authentic view of the war and to create, you know, a realistic, plausible narrative that one could, that would give the reader and, you know, an actual feeling of what happened in the conflict. So the te- some of the techniques they use, the techniques that these really helped shape you know, really helped open people's eyes to the reality of Vietnam. And that's what really helped to shape America's viewpoint of the war. Um, So first of all, relying on the soldiers' accounts, interviewing the soldiers for Michael Hare and Tim O'Brien, who was actually a soldier and, and who based his narrative, his fiction, off of these real accounts and experiences. Um, This went a long way in showing what was really happening overseas so whereas you might have had some propaganda beforehand um the government trying to make things you know make things seem better than they were well o'brien and Hare, they reject that notion they are very they're very obscene about it they try to show it as it actually happened and all the violence and everything and this is one of the things that really helped to uh, open America's eyes to the reality of it. Um, and then we get on to we get into the themes. So in both works, they rely on the individu- individuality of the soldiers in retelling the story. So each account, there's not one single experience of Vietnam. So they compile all of these interviews all these accounts of U.S. troops into one to kind of, I've said it before, with the collective narrative point that they keep combines these interviews to create a general, you know, kind of average, authentic viewpoint of the war. But each one is unique in its own way. And I said average, but these actually, like, that's actually kind of a not a good word to use because there's some... Um, I mean, there's some pretty shocking stuff and shocking things in both of these works. Another theme is is the harm of political corruption. And Michael Hare actually talks a lot about this with what he calls the secret history of Vietnam. His secret history is that the soldiers were the victims of the war, of political greed, um, of the U.S. government, you know, the anti-communist policies. And moving on, this is still within their techniques. But this one, this slide actually focuses more on the style of both author, authors. So I said it before with obscenity. One thing that really helped um, show their, 
the truth of the war, the reality of it, was the dedication of Hare and O'Brien to the thing, the real things, the real imagery and obscenity that happened. So, um, for instance, they they don't let up. They don't try to. I mean, it's all gore and violence and emotion. They really tell it how it is. It's not bliss. It's not blissful. But um, that's one thing that really open really makes the American public feel the reality of the war and the real experience and emotions with it. So the description, they are hair. Hare was a reporter, a journalist. So usually, a, you know, a journalist, they don't, they're not supposed to get too novelistic, too, they don't usually get too descriptive. But Hare, as we said with the new journalist, Hare literally, he treats it like a novel. So he gets all, he gets so detailed and he reveals it, it literally, it reads like, you know, it's so much more informative, so much more real than your standard article in a newspaper. Um, this line here actually comes from O'Brien's work, The Thing Carry. You could die in a sudden blood burning crunch as your chopper hit the ground like dead weight. You could fly apart so that your pieces would never be gathered. Even though that's from O'Brien, they're actually, uh, Michael Hare does that a lot. He goes into those kind of details about how you can die in the war. And that just that's just not something you would see in your everyday, everyday newspaper article, or TV broadcast, news broadcast. Um, the narration of both, of both works, the things they carried, and dispatches, are also they're kind of similar. Well, but then again, they're kind of different. So the things they carried, it has more of a shifting viewpoint between Michael Hare places him. He's the protagonist of the work. But it shifts between him when he was younger, serving in the platoon in Vietnam, and then it'll go to him as an older writer, writing about as an old man, decades later, writing about the um, what happened in the war. And then every now and then it'll go into a third person, you know, kind of a third person point of view, discussing the, you know, an event of something that happened of another platoon member. Dispatches, on the other hand, it remain it it remains mostly within Michael Hare's viewpoint. Now we said they rely on the soldiers' accounts, and that's true. But Hare, you really feel his, you know, his he was a journalist, and you really you can really kind of hear the language of that. Sometimes you're seeing it through, you're seeing the soldiers, the military, kind of through an outsider's point of view. Whereas in the things they carried, you would not, you would, you feel like you're one of the soldiers. So, moving on to inclusion. Well, before I get there, about the narration, about these three things, as I said before, these, all of these, the techniques, the style, these all combine to really give a detailed real life, you know, really informative view of the war and when Americans were reading Americans were reading these dispatches in 77 right you know to about two years after the war ended in 75 and the things they carried even though it was 1990 you know it still worked to you know reinforce these ideas and Tim O'Brien's you know his unique traits in his book that kind of such as post-war trauma that kind of um informed Americans too. But both of these were, you know, very informative works that showed Americans what was what what it was really like to be in Vietnam. It brought the Sorry to interrupt, Brandon. We have one minute, okay? Okay. Yes, sir. Um so moving on to the conclusion. So I mentioned her secret history. What that he says in dispatch is that so basically the secret history of the war is that Vietnam was a was a war fought incorrectly and for wrong reasons, that the American soldier was the victim of that war. And as he saw it, the war was fought under the official languages of mil- military and government propaganda, left largely uncovered by much of wartime press. So um, the soldier was the victim. 
And also Hare saw, he saw the inadequ- inadequacies of the other reporters. So this is what really inspired him to give, to move to a new journalism approach and produce dispatches. And overall, Hare and, Hare and O'Brien, through their unique, their kind of un, almost completely un, or, unorthodox style, they created very impressionable works on them that people had never really seen before. And this is what overall, in the Reagan era and in the early 90s, what created the kind of, you know, soldier as the victim stigma, this still exists today. Um, there have been some, I mean, there's been some change, but it's uh, overall, it's that stigma that the soldier was the, the victim of the war, of political corruption and violence, that still exists today. And that is... This is my uh, bibliography. This is my image citations. Thank you very much, Brandon. Okay, um, audience members, uh, let me ask you all to um, go over to the chat and offer Brandon some questions, please. And Brandon, you may want to click the stop presenting button. Oh, I'm so, I'm sorry. No worries. There you go. I'm, so, I'm still trying to get used to Google Meet. Yeah. All right. So, okay. I actually really like that um, question, Matthew. He asked, through my research on this topic, has your opinion of Viet- on Vietnam been affected? I will say that, you know, I've always grown up, you know, with the view that yes, the American soldier was the victim. You know, even though you have things like we learn about the Malay massacre and other atrocities of the war, you know, overall, I just, I always saw those things as, you know, kind of just one-time things, very few happenings. But as I read these works, I actually discovered that what Michael Hare and Tim O'Brien were trying to do is, not only were they trying to victimize soldiers to um, put them on the receiving end of the the negativity, they were trying to show. They display the acts of the soldiers. They talk about how the U.S. soldiers burn villages, other things. So basically, you get the feeling that the these soldiers were kind of you know they were bad people. What they were trying to do though is a lot of the times. They were trying to show understanding of what was happening. It was a war. You, you hear the saying, war is hell. And I, I hope I'm not talking too long on this. But so they just try to show, you know, that mindset when you're over there. It's really it's really a mind-altering mindset. Mm. It can make you do crazy things. Um, Dr. Hamilton, Brandon, can you discuss further this idea of obscenity as a form of realism? Okay. So, yes, so basically in my research, I rem- I didn't have it in the slide. I remember reading, there was some account, one of the sources used, it showed like kind of a buttered up account of it, of the war. It's kind of patriotic. And, you know, it kind of seemed, seemed real. But as, when you read O'Brien and Hare, seeing the, uh, the obscenity, it... You know, it's kind of, it kind of shocks you at first. It's just different. But there's something about that, it being different, that really, that really um, kind of shows that it's real. And if you actually, Hare and O'Brien, they, they interviewed, they, like I said, they focused their stories on the interviews of the soldiers. And I mean, it turns out that there's different tales of crazy stuff that were happening if you read these books. Um, so it kind of seems kind of seems like a paradox obscenity and realism you know if it's obscene then is it really does it really seem that real well i think it depends on who you ask but i think it definitely builds on the realism do you think dr do thank you dr barr um do you think the influence of these books was tied to the public reputation of the authors 
or what was the influence more rooted in rep- representation of techniques or of journalism? So I definitely think, first of all, Michael Hare, definitely think it was more rooted in the rep- representational techniques because, well, first of all, Michael Hare was just, he was kind of a, uh, he was kind of a, you know, fresh out of college, you know, not really popular reporter for Esquire, just a war correspondent. So he definitely, and Dr. Brent, you can stop me if we need to. Um, yeah, maybe 30 seconds here. 30 seconds. Okay. So basically he wasn't really known, but in 77, his work really kind of took off, you know, it gained popularity, great reviews you know that O'Brien was more O'Brien was of course more established but I don't think it was I don't think it's more of a reputational thing Dr. Purdue uh, okay very good okay I'm going to stop you there Brandon thank you everybody everybody um please give a virtual clap for Brandon and um I'm going to change directions now um